Hello everyone, this is Professor Patterns, and in this video, we're going to be looking at OpenWeb UI version 0.5.19. Now, there are a lot of cool new features that have been added into this update, so why don't we just start by diving right in. We'll start with the first point, and that's the Logit Bias Parameter Support. So this says that it allows us to fine-tune conversation dynamics by adjusting the Logit Bias Parameter directly in the chat settings. The reason why we would want to do this is because it gives us a lot more control over the model responses. So what is logit bias parameter support? Why do we need this? Imagine that you are developing a chatbot and this is your technical support chatbot. Now, sometimes this bot might give a response and say something like, oh man, sorry to hear, let me help you with that. Maybe you don't want the spot to give responses like this because it can be a little bit unprofessional. So what you might want to do is look at specific words and then maybe give some sort of a penalty parameter to specific words so that the bot doesn't actually say those. Now, a little bit of a quick recap about how a computer or how an AI understands words is that it assigns something known as a token ID to each word. So for example, hello would have the token ID one, goodbye has the token ID two, welcome has the token ID three. And just like that, here we have some more tokens. Uh, so apologies with a token ID, assistance has a token ID, oops, and I also have some sort of a token ID. So in this case, with logit bias, we can give positives and negative values to certain words. So apologies, we can give it positive tokens like plus 50 and oops, for example, we don't want this bot to say oops, so we can give it a negative penalty. And the way that it's going to look like now is instead of your bot, whenever it's giving a response, say if it sees, for example, oops, looks like there's a problem with your account, it's actually not going to use this sentence anymore because oops has a negative uh, penalty versus the sentence that it might end up choosing is apologies for the inconvenience, let me assist you in finding a solution. It really tries to look for all of the tokens that have a positive uh, word or positive association. So. I have here a Google Colab notebook. If you wanted to take a look, I have, I'm gonna share a link to this in the description, but this allows us to get the token ID for every single word for the GPT-40 model. You can use it to also find for other models. So over here, I gave it a couple of words like apology, solution, problem, and assistance, and it gave me the token ID for each one of these words. Now, the reason why some words have multiple token IDs is because uh, in some, it's because of the byte pair encoding or BPE. It's just the way that it's uh, set up when the model was training. Now on the platform or on open web UI, the way that this looks like is I can go over here, click on controls and I can scroll all the way down to where it says logit bias. And it says it, it's for boosting or penalizing specific tokens for constrained responses. So bias values would be uh, clamped between negative 100 and 100. So if I go here, it says enter comma separated values, token, and the bias value pairs. So in this case, we would provide it the token and then how much we would want to give it some sort of a negative or a positive bias. So it allows our chatbots to respond in certain ways by avoiding certain words. So that is the first point, the logit bias parameter support. Let's take a le look at the next one. It's customizable enter behavior. <laughs> this is a big one. I know a lot of people have been complaining about this, but you can now configure enter to send messages only when combined with control. So control plus enter. So the way that you can do that is go here, click on settings and then interface. And here you should be able to see the enter to send. So enter key behavior. So there's enter to send. There's also control plus enter to send. So I know a lot of people had been asking for this one as well. The other one is collapsible code blocks. So you can now collapse all of these long code blocks in order to declutter your chat. So for example, here I asked it to create a website and you can see that this code is so big, it really takes up like everything, but now I can collapse it and it says it's hidden 191 hidden lines, just like how it did with ChatGPT. And for example, in this case, if you want to see some of the other text, we can see it better. So that is the third point on collapsible code blocks. 
The other one is for tag selector or yeah, tag selector and model selector. So quickly find and categorize models with the new tag filtering system in model selector. So the way that this would work is you would go here to your admin panel, select settings and then model. Now, suppose that there is a model that you really enjoy using. Um, say that you're using the Nomic, or I guess Nomic's not there, but Gemini or something. So here, if you click on edit, you'll see that you have the option of adding a tag to this model. So the tag could be something like front end development, web development, natural language processing, whatever you want this model to be good at. So that, let's just say I'm gonna give it a tag for front end development, and I'm gonna give it a tag for web development. Now, very important, you also want to make sure that you hit save and update. And then once you do that, now if you go here to your home screen, and if you have to select a model, you can select them based on all of these different settings. So if, for example, if I want to use a model for front-end development, I know all of my models that are tagged for front-end development. And similarly, I, I should also be able to do back-end development and those kind of things as well. So there are also a couple more models here that I tagged uh, just when I was trying it out the first time. So that is the tag selector. It's very useful when you're using something like Open Router. Um, so for example, when you have a huge collection of different models or something like that, then the tag could be very helpful because you know which model would be better for whatever purpose or application that you're working with. So that is this point right here. Next, experimental Elasticsearch vector DB support. So this says it now supports Elasticsearch as a vector database. It offers more flexibility for data retrieval in the RAG workflows. So I took a look at the latest changes that were made to this repository and just kind of understanding like how all of those things really fit in here. Uh, I think the file that I need to look for is config.py and that is available right here. So in this file, if you scroll down, you can see that there is Elasticsearch and what I need to do is set an environment variable when I'm creating my um, open web UI Docker container. And I need to provide this environment variable. It's also looking for these things like username, password, API keys, but we can see that it does allow the Elasticsearch. Okay, what is next? Um, here it says general reliability enhancements, so various stability improvements across web UI. And that you can see here in um, on GitHub, we can see that there are a couple of cleanups that were done, um, some comments that were deleted and just some basic updates that were made. So you can always go back um, over here to the GitHub repository, clone the repository locally on your computer. And then that way you can see exactly all of the different changes that were made. Here it says, uh, we also have something known as updated translations. So refined multilingual support for better localization across uh, various different languages. Um, it also has a couple of fixes. So LDAP email case sensitivity, stream hook activation, and then WebSocket chat event registration. So just some minor fixes that it would have had. And that's pretty much it for this video. I just wanted to go over what were the latest updates, uh, just have you understand what logit bias parameter support is for, and uh, looking forward to the next one. Thanks, everyone. Goodbye.